All right, so let's say you've received a phone call or an email from Canary saying that the patient's imaging is complete. What now? Well, if you remember that referral form that you made for Canary, you gave the patient one copy, and then you kept one for yourself, which had these clinician codes and referral IDs on them. So on the referral form, it says, to download the case from a computer, go to secure.canary.com and go to enter clinician code. So let's go to Internet Explorer again and type in secure.canaray.com and you'll either get this page which gives you an option to enter the clinician code from a referral form or you'll end up at the referral center where up here you can enter a clinician code from a referral form. So the referral ID in this case is 559 and this is one that you can actually use. It's a real referral ID and the clinician code is M49YQYWANG for this case. So I just cut and paste it and there we go. So once I hit submit, we can actually see what we have for this case. So it was the referral ID, the region of interest, the, re the referral reason, who sent it and how you wanted us to deliver it to you. Also, in a real case, when a patient has completed their imaging at Canary, the referral status changes. This is good because if you're not signed up to Canary and you're just sending us referrals this way, you can still sign on with your referral ID at secure.canary.com and you can see whether the patient has been seen or not. I mean, if they haven't been seen, then you should maybe get on their case and find out why they haven't been seen or why they've not made their visit yet. Or if they have been seen, then you know it's over. And if it says that the case is complete, well, all the files and things are ready. So we have not updated this on our real site because this is not a real patient. It's just an example. But as you can see, we've uploaded one set of files, the DICOM, DICOM data files and the DICOM file viewer. So basically, you can click on download the file. And here it says, do you want to save whatever the name of the zip file is from secure.canary.com? And I'm going to save it and it's going to take 37 seconds. Now, this is a zip file and you must understand that this is actually a full Conebeam CT data set. We've compressed it a little bit so that it comes to you in a reasonable length of time. If we didn't compress it, it would take you 20 minutes to download it. So this way you can get it in you know, less than a minute hopefully, which is not bad for a CT. And you can do this on any computer. Nice thing about our system is that you're not limited in terms of just having to have it on a physical drive or something at, at uh, or on a CD at one computer, you can do this at home if you have the codes and whatnot. So let's view the downloads and see. Here's the example. Let's open it. Oh, once it's done scanning, I have an antivirus on my computer. I would recommend everybody use Avast antivirus. It's fast, it's free, and it's pretty good. So let's open it, and you see that you end up with two. Um, two folders. So what I'm going to do is I am going to copy those folders to let's say my desktop. So I'm going to go to my desktop and I'm going to make a new folder and my folder is going to be called um, example scan for video because I need to know where I'm putting all this stuff and then I'm going to hit paste. So those two things from my folder are going to end up here. So there they are, 30 megs in this case. Uh, in your case, it might be bigger or it might be smaller, most likely bigger if you're doing a larger field of view, for example, or whatever the story is. Anyway, that's how you download the case. In the next video, I will show you how to open the files and um, how you can process them or view them. And this is in real time, by the way. I'm not spitting anything up or anything like that. So here we go. Two folders. One is the data. One is the viewer. In my last video, I showed you how to download this DICOM stuff and put it on, onto your desktop or somewhere on your computer. You'd end up with two folders. One folder is the viewer that we include with all our cases. The reason why we include this is because it lets you do some implant planning and measurements. The other folder is the DICOM data. 
Tycom files are universal. You can pretty much use them uh, for importing data into any of your dental imaging softwares, pretty much, except Simplant. Uh, Simplant makes you do a conversion that costs money, and then you can use it in Simplant. So we don't like Simplant. But if you request it, we will make you the Simplant file. Anyway, to run the files, what you do is you click on the 3D module folder and go to kdis3dmodule.exe and click on it. And then if it asks you, should you run it, you should say yes. And once it opens, it wants to know where the files are. So if you'll remember, I put mine on my desktop. So Milan is me. Desktop, there it is. And we're going to find example scan for video. That was where I saved my files when I downloaded them. We look for the data directory. And then in the data directory, I can pick any of the DICOM files. So I'll just pick, let's say, that one. And I'll hit OK. So now that the program knows where my DICOM data is, it's going to start loading it. So that just takes about 40 seconds. Now you'll notice, compared to a CD, this is blazing fast. For anyone that's waited three minutes for a CD, when it opens, you'll often get um, a choice to reformat the data. So reformatting is basically like if the if the scan uh, was done so the patient's head was tilted or something like that, you can reformat it. In most cases, you don't need to do it. So you can just hit skip. And then the data will load. Sometimes there's been an analysis that's already been done by us at Canary, and it'll ask you to pick an analysis. And you can just pick our analysis and then get started. In this case, that wasn't that wasn't the case. So, looking at what we have here, we have an axial view, we have a 3D view, we have a coronal view, and we have a sagittal view. And you can see what these views correspond to in the 3D. So, I'm just going to maximize the window. So, as you can see, the little pink frame corresponds to this pink cornered box right here, and we can move it around. And you can see how we're moving back and forth, and we can see what's going on. The yellow frame goes up and down, so we can see what's happening with the yellow frame. And you move things around by moving these little, these little arrows on the edge. And once the cursor changes, you can move things around. And then lastly, we can move things side to side. And as you can see, when we adjust it, like, so we're looking at it superior, inferior. There we go. See? So, very simple. This is not the view that you often want to look at. If you have a whole arch or something, for example, you often want to see the slices buckle lingually. And sometimes we don't have an arch drawn for you, or the automatic arch drawn by the program is not very good. So let's draw a new arch. This is the arch button. Click on the arch button, and it'll say, should we delete this new arch? It's a crappy arch, so yes. Now we'll draw our own one. It's just left clicks until you find you're at the end point, and then you double click, and now you have a much better arch. So now, what we're seeing is an arch, and then along that, that pink line, we have this pink box, and we can move back and forth, and we can see what's going on. So let's look at these slices. So here you can see this impacted tooth. Now, let's say you're not getting a good view of this. What can you do about it? Well, there's this little box on the top, where you can thicken the slice up. Right now, the slice is at 200 micrometers thick. We're only seeing basically what's on the line. If we thicken it up to, let's say, 10 millimeters, well, suddenly it looks much more like a panoramic radiograph. And we can actually see the whole tooth, and you can see the thickness of the slice on the side view there. But this is much better, because now when we're looking at the cross sections, they look normal. The only thing to be aware of with this is that when you draw these slices, sometimes the cross sections are reversed. There's nothing you can do about this in the Kodak viewer, so you have to be just aware of it. So, for example, looking at this one, we know that on the buccal aspect, um, we've got the bone, and on the lingual aspect, we've got the tooth. However, the way it's showing up in this view, that's not the way it is. So that's something that you have to be cognizant of. If you really don't like it, draw a new arch, but make it reverse to the way that you drew it last time. There. So now we have the same thing, except 
the arch is reversed and as you can see now it matches up to the way it looks in the mouth. So we can now go buckle and lingual and we can see what's going on with this tooth and you can there's these little red dots or little blue dots that you can use to reorient yourself. So in case you don't like to look at things when they're up and down, you can reorient along the long axis of whatever tooth you're looking at. And now you can see what's going on. And we can see that, you know, the nerve canal is um, buckled to the tooth and the root is kind of extending into the um, submandibular space. You know, um, kind of treacherous. I don't know. I'm not a treating clinician, so to me this looks treacherous, but maybe s surgeons laugh in the face of danger. Who knows? So that's how you can do your um, uh, panoramic curve. You can actually do this to go all around an arch, but we don't have a whole arch, but that's what it ends up looking like. Very much like what you see in Nobel Guide or some plant. And if you wanted to draw a nerve, you could do that as well and all you would have to do is find a place to start so for example I will start right there we can kind of see a lot of the nerve there so I'm going to start with the nerve tool click left click and now I'm scrolling in and out with my scroll button on my mouse and then I double click to finish let's drag that over double click to finish and now we have a nerve so actually in our 3D view I can maximize with this button we can actually see what's going on relative to the tooth. So it's really neat. And you can adjust it if you click on 3D adjustments. We can make it a little bit less opaque and we can kind of see what's going on here. So very neat stuff. Um, nice for showing your patient in terms of patient education and whatnot. Now, granted, this is on a blazing fast computer. If your computer is not very fast, it's not probably going to run as smoothly as it does on mine. So if that's the case, click on Edit Preferences down in the bottom here, it's those little cogs. Click on the little skull and make sure that you're on performance and that shading is off. Watch what happens when I put it onto full quality with shading. Now this is on a fast computer. So we've got shading and we've got high quality. So there's actually a little there's actually a little lag before it becomes the final appearance. So that's not what you want. Performance no shading. Okay. All right. So that's it really. Oh, and if you want to minimize it again, if you want to make a measurement Let's say we wanted to see the distance from the crest to the, to the canal. What you would do is click on the activate measurement mode. Click once to start, click again to finish, and then you can see it's 12.8 millimeters. To make another measurement, just click and click. And you can see the width, make some more. As you can see, it's very easy to make whatever measurements you need. The only downside is the measurements stay on the screen even when you scroll in and out, which is something that doesn't happen in programs like Simplant. And then to delete a measurement, there's these little garbage cans next to the measurements. You can delete them. If you need to delete a nerve canal, you can delete a nerve canal. If you need to delete an arch, you can delete the arch, etc. So that's basically how you do everything with the Kodak Viewer. I hope you found it useful.